Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Digging for Drez. In the meantime between episodes I got a few more contracts, got a lot more funds and a lot more science. So let's put them to good use. So we need to go to the moon. We need more than 30 pirates. So upgrade! Yay! And we also need more fuel tanks and lines to make things easier to build. And solar panels wouldn't go astray either. And we'll get a probe core because we might well get some more some satellite contracts after this. Anything else that we can get? We could get struts. I think we'll get struts. And launch clamps. Now, let's dive into the VAB and start building this thing out. This only needs to be a lunar flyby. So, it shouldn't have to be too big as things go. But I like to be conservative. Minimum of three solar panels so that no matter what orientation we are in, we will always have some panels facing the sun batteries. Also, in the interim between episodes, I found out something quite interesting. The uh, science things like this, you can set them to show a readout constantly when you right-click on them. Doing that causes them to consume power, as it really should. So, yeah, don't leave your instruments showing data if you want to get places. So we'll keep this out. Electric charge generated but not used. Well, I'm going to be having reaction wheels going. And really I should probably also have some uh, some sort of science on this. Yeah, we'll only have two, because high and low science, we're not going to be landing. And it's a good idea to have antennas. Another thing that they've changed that we'll see later is that... Um, Uh, what was I going to say? Damn it. Oh yeah. Um, there is now high altitude science for the thermometers. Which is a very welcome addition. Two engines, thanks. There we go. Now, we'll do bit of asparagus staging here. Some might consider this a bit cheating. Personally, I think it's good utilization of resources and abilities that I have at my disposal. The reason why some people might consider asparagus staging cheating is because there's really no rocket in real life that has fuel cross-feed capabilities like that. Although, the uh, the Falcon Heavy, which is currently in development by SpaceX, for those of you who don't know, SpaceX is a uh, private spaceflight company who has partnered with NASA 
to resupply the ISS. Anyway, their Falcon Heavy rocket, which they're currently working on, does have a fuel crossfeed system for the first stage. It's got a very similar setup to this, really, where it's basically got two duplicates of the core stage strapped on either side, and then they've got a crossfeed system so that when the tanks on the strap-on boosters have been drained, there's still about 70% of the fuel left in the core stage, but all stages are firing at the same time, just like this will be. Which means you can get much more Delta V. So we'll call this Luna Flyby Mark 1. And no, Bill, you keep getting there, but we are going to give Val this opportunity. No point in doing action groups. Launch! Okay. I forgot to look at the thrust to weight ratio on the... Uh, engineer. But we don't really need that. Now let's just see where is the moon right now. Moon is right here and I cannot target it yet because I have not upgraded the tracking station. Okay. So let's just launch. Ooh. We are a bit slow. Uh oh. Ooh, that's not good. Revert. Um, my second stage engine was firing when it shouldn't have been. Um, let's see, where are you? You are there. You need to fire there. That's better. I should have seen that in there. So, 1.46. Okay. So, save and launch again. I should have paid more closer attention to my staging. <laughs> Check your staging! Take two! Again, the smoke effects. They are awesome! Um... Once again, we need to revert because... I derped. A lot. These fuel lines need to go from the outside in, not the inside out. That's better. I was wondering why it wasn't showing this stage. Now it is. Good. Now before we launch again, let's just check this. Properly, we have clamps and three engines firing, then decouplers, then decouplers, engine, decoupler, engine, decoupler, parachute. Staging is correct, we have everything we want. We are now ready to go fly. I've been playing this game for over a year now shouldn't be making mistakes like this. Third time with feeling? Val's just always happy. She's just happy to be along for the ride. Now, because we are accelerating a bit slower than we normally would, we will not be turning over quite as quickly. Normally I would be at 5 degrees by 1 kilometer. Wibbly wobbly. Make long things tend to be that way.
found a good rule of thumb for this new atmosphere is to maintain your acceleration between 1 and 2 G's gradually um, accelerating less and less as you gain altitude that helps you uh, keep from overspeeding and wasting fuel and stage of burnout, separation, full throttle and we are on our way now we are accelerating at less than 1 G but because we're accelerating sideways we are still gaining speed which is good if you're gaining speed and still ascending you are generally going to make it to space oh look there's Minmus we will be going there at a later date This mission's goal is actually quite similar to uh, Apollo 8. We're just going to the moon, we're going to orbit the moon, and then come back without landing. Let's check our apparatus. Ooh, we are very close. So. We will burn upwards. Okay, that tells me that I rushed my turn a lot. At this point, at this altitude, my apparatus should be outside the atmosphere by now. So, mental note for next time flying a rocket like this do not turn over quite so quickly. It's all a learning experience. We are coming up on Miko, stage SEP, and fire second stage. And now that we are getting close to 2 kilometers per second, we can start following our prograde vector and our apparatus will still keep climbing. And for those of you who are new to KSP, this is what you really want to do to get into orbit. Your vertical speed is not nearly as important as your horizontal speed. You want to be going as fast as possible horizontally. And 200 kilometers is more than enough. So yeah, once you get out of the uh, deepest part of the part of the atmosphere, let's see if I can talk without squeaking. Once you get out of the deepest part of the atmosphere, you want to start going sideways as much as possible, because that's really what an orbit is. You're still falling towards the planet, but your horizontal speed is so great you fall past it. That's the whole idea of an orbit. So time accelerate. and just look at the pretty visuals and we're getting some stars and let's look at the sun which is actually sort of new I think the skybox dimming like that as you get close to as you look close to, to the sun in reality, you wouldn't actually be able to see any stars if you're on the light side of a body, just because that the uh, light from the sun and the reflection of the body would overpower the rather dim light of any stars that you might be able to see. On the night side, however, 
is pretty much nothing but stars. And fire. Engines to circularize. Now. Hmm. Where should we f aim for? We want to aim for about 45 degrees in front of the moon's orbit, so about there. So we will start our burn there. And there we go. Now once again, no tracking station upgrades, so no maneuver nodes, not even time to apses. So we just burn and hope for the best. Another rule of thumb would be to burn prograde at moonrise. So, once the moon comes over the edge of the planet, burn forwards. And Seiko, fire orbit stage. Whoa! Let's not overcook this. Let's get it. Just to the moon's orbit. So, it doesn't show SOI changes, but we should not have a problem with that. As we get up here, the moon will catch up with us. And there is a bird at my window. And there we are. So it doesn't show where my orbit is going to be after this. So I've got plenty of fuel and I wish that bird would go away. So I'm going to insert into an orbit around the moon. Okay, the temperature measuring the temperature in space appears to be quite impossible because there's no matter. This will give the R&D guys something to think about for a while. Keep that data. Mystery goo. The goo feels right at home here. There is somewhere a crowdsourced mod that gives more variety to these science messages. I have yet to find it, but I do know it's out there. You look at the cold gray surface, looks really beat up with craters. Don't know how you can really see it from here. Keep that data. Alright Val, out you get. EVA reports. Quarter observations. Cool. Now we'll take the data from all of this. Let's jump off the capsule for a second. This is a good practice for any time you're in orbit is to uh, that's not the one I took. It was this one. Anyway, this is a good practice for any time you're in orbit, is to jump out and collect the data from your experiments, even if you're planning on recovering them on landing, because there is a tendency for things to blow up. Now, we need two points somewhat retrograde, I'm guessing about there, as we descend towards periapsis. It's a rather good periapsis too. And there. And burn. Orbit's getting weird. Until it closes up. And we are circular. So now that I'm in a captured orbit, I will mu be much more... What am I trying to say here? <laughs> It'll be much easier to aim for a proper descent. 
And we are not yet low over... No, we are not. We are not yet low. So burn a bit more. Let's get down to... 45 kilometers. That would be nice. Oh, don't warp past things. Crew report from near the moon. Log temperature. And goo. Once again, we point normal. Or north. EVA. EV report above the far side crater. That might be a good place to land. Once we gain the technology to attempt such a thing. Alright, I'm gonna board and stop this rotation. Because that's another thing that changed, I think, in point 90, was that at least in career mode, I'm not sure if it does it in sandbox, if there is no pilot or probe on a spacecraft, or in a spacecraft, it uh, does not. The uh, spacecraft does not maintain SAS. Previously, you could engage SAS and get out, and the capture would still maintain SAS. Not anymore. So. To get back to Kerbin, we need to speed up in relation to the moon's orbit, but slow down in relation to Kerbin. So we come to the inside of the moon's orbit like this, and we burn prograde. Really, we should burn flat, because we're ascending. That would be wasting fuel. So I'm just going to eyeball this and say about there. Nah, uh, really more about there, get it sort of looking like how it was when we arrived. And I still have plenty of fuel to trim that if I need to, which I probably will. And I don't know if I got an EVA report high over the moon. Let's just check that. Board, dump, yeah, I got it. And we have no periaps. That is bad. That is very bad. Because re-entry heat would kill us. If we try to do this. There's that bird again. Now. I need to. Like this. There we are. We have, have a periaps. Let's put it at 33 kilometers. That should be high enough that we do not burn up. And I have modified the heat shield files so that I should now be stable without those fins on the top of the capsule. Once again, warping very close. I've retrieved all the science I might need so that I don't change my orbit too much. We'll ditch this normal and then go retrograde. And once again, like I said in the last episode, try to fly this down a bit. And I apologize if I'm rambling, but I'm just trying to fill the air time with with commentary so that you're not just watching some dude play a game which might be what you're here for and no one's gonna fault you for that but uh, 
I have to say, I am still quite new to this whole Let's Play thing, so I still have a lot to learn. And as we get re-entry effects, we will go full integrate. And we are stable! Yay! We're not flipping out. Good. So I shouldn't lose any more Kerbals due to the capsule flipping around during re-entry. And, just so that we can see how hot things are getting, do this. Ooh, we are getting quite warm. Now these temperature readouts are in Kelvin, so take off about 250 degrees to find the uh, how hot they are in Celsius. Kelvin is a uh, unit of temperature that is an absolute. We are ascending. That is not good. You know, Kelvin is an absolute scale, so zero Kelvin is absolute zero. So, which is about negative 253 degrees Celsius, I believe. And we are not going to come back on this flyby. Not by a long shot. Okay, another note. When returning from the moon, perhaps this at about 20 kilometers would be prudent. So let's just time accelerate around here. And time accelerates again. I really do like the design of the heat shields that squad's made. They appear to be made of some form of ceramic ablator. Or being that they're brown, they might even be made of cork, I don't know. Yes, there were heat shields made of cork. The idea of a heat shield like this, and a blade of heat shield, is a sacrificial coating that will vaporize and ablate away, taking heat with it. Really similar to how um, sweating works. As the uh, water evaporates off one's skin, it takes heat with it, cooling the person down. Similar thing with a heat shield. As the air is compressed in front of the spacecraft, it heats up. Then the material of the heat shield will vaporize and deplete, taking heat with it and preventing it from conducting into the spacecraft. And a sacrificial ablative heat shield can be made of really anything. Cork, ceramic, anything that will vaporize at high temperatures. Now another form of thermal protection for a spacecraft would be an active thermal protection, which would be something that's designed to withstand the heat and prevent it from conducting into the rest of the spacecraft. The uh, space shuttle's thermal tiles were a good example of this. They were made of the ceramic material and the way they were made resulted in them being comprised of about 90% air or empty space so they were very light. And air is a very poor conductor of heat. So, as the surface of the tiles heated up to about 2000 degrees Celsius, the uh, underside of the tiles, that were against the actual skin of the spacecraft, only got up to about 90 degrees. Which was good because the aluminium superstructure of the shuttle would have lost its strength at about 
200 degrees. Will we get back on this orbit? I don't think so. All in all, this skipping back out thing is good for limiting the uh, how severe the heating is on the spacecraft. But if you are limited by such things as life support, as one would be in real life, skipping back out and going for a whole nother orbit may not be in the cards. So, 210, we will be coming back on this next orbit. Finally. And around we go, once again. There's the moon. And the deserts. I did fly a plane to the deserts before off camera but there's still a lot we can learn from the desert now because I want to get down I will angle the spacecraft the other way so that as the air is coming in like this it's sort of getting pushed deeper in to the atmosphere as opposed to this where it would push me upwards So we have 176 units of ablator left. That should be enough to make a air brake maneuver at Jewel, I would imagine. And because I do not want to burn up, we will start going prograde now. Ah, this has taken a lot longer than I thought it would. But, with the funds that we get from the uh, contracts that we have now completed, I just remembered I actually missed one, we should be able to upgrade the tracking station. And flames. Val's a bit more concerned than she was at launch, but still grinning away. Ooh, over two G's. Wow. Three G's. And we are now below Mac 2 peak of about 3.3 G's I would say now that we are subsonic you know what I'm gonna wait to deploy the chute because it slows me down so much and shoot now and we are over the highlands. I've gotten all the signs from the highlands that I could possibly get. Minus the surface sample. And plonk. Let's see the spoils of our labor. So... We got 153 science, 617 funds recovered from the parts, and 3 XP gained. But we have more funds to get from the clamps that we left behind. Let's see if there are any more contracts. We have contract to land on the moon. We'll take that. Ah, uh, here we go. Position satellite in geostationary orbit. 
Oh, okay. Um, that's new. Keep line of sight with that place. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, and we have a couple of rescue missions. A few rescue missions. Let's see. Position satellite mm -hmm. in a polar mm -hmm. orbit. So, launch a new unmanned probe. Reach designated polar orbit. And maintain stability for 10 seconds. Let's see where these orbits actually are. Whoa. That's a big orbit. Aha. So that's where it wants me to keep line of sight of. Ooh, boy. Well, I think we will take these couple of rescue missions and this polar orbit and the uh, geostationary orbit as well. And we'll see about doing these in the next episode. Till then, see you guys later.